Okay, this is going to be a short, well, shortish tutorial discussion of uh, how the templates work and how to add points using a template to a map that will preserve the attributes of an ArcGIS shapefile. So one of the things that we have here is a couple of points that are added in that probably don't have the attributes that we need when we export to a shapefile for ArcGIS. So what we do is we go ahead and select the point, then right click, and then we can say Edit Selected Strike Dip Point. This point was created by using the Strike Dip tool in Global Mapper. It's nice, it shows the correct symbology, and it's rotatable and displayable with the dip. It's great. The caveat, though, is if you're using a different data model than, say, what Global Mapper uses, you're locked into forcing yourself to edit the attributes manually. There's goods and bads to this. The nice part is, is in Global Mapper, it displays very well, but when you export, you lose all of the uh, fields that were preserved in your shape files when you originally created them and imported them into Global Mapper. So when we edit the strike dip point, we can see that the template comes up with these bits of information that actually aren't preserving the information that we need for our data model. In this case, we use NCGMP09, soon to be GEMS, the Geologic Mapping Schema. So with this, we actually can't get to the attribute table of this to be able to edit the features in a way that we want to. And we can't even change it to be saved in the appropriate uh, feature class that we want either. So we're kind of locked into just having this the way it is. And when we export it, it does export the strike and dip, but it's not in the correct field. And we have a whole bunch of other information that we want to record when we're creating these data points. Uh, some of which are the location accuracy. How certain are you are that this point is in fact right here? Um, all of this needs to be added in to be compliant with the NCGMP09 GEMS data model. If we click on the edit point feature, we can actually come in and modify the feature info. And we can see that there's only the three attributes that come in when we create a strike dip point using the global mapper input feature, the strike dip feature. But one of the things that is capable, be, capable of being done on this is that we can go ahead and add attributes as we need to be. Now let's start from the top down. It's always best to start from the top down. And the reason why I say that is because we don't skip through and then forget, oh yeah, I needed to do something with this dialog box up here. If you work top down, you never are allowed, quote unquote, to skip anything. So the first thing that we see is we have a strike and dip feature. That's fine. We don't mind that at all. But we can also apply one of our templates. Now, the symbol is drawing a nice way that's good for uh, display in Global Mapper so people can see how it's working. The caveat, though, is that it doesn't have all of the correct default values like our predefined feature types, our templates, do. So we're going to sort of cheat the system a little bit. And we're going to leave it in strike dip, but let's make sure we're saving it in the correct location. In this case, it needs to be in orientation points, which was renamed strike, it, ooh, excuse me, strike and dip. Now, uh, the custom description. We can go ahead and you put in a custom description for this. For this purpose, it's fine to just call it strike a dip. That's fine. If you wanted to specify in further detail what this was, that's fine. However, just remember, when we export this shape file to be loaded into ArcGIS, this custom description doesn't show up in the description field like in ArcGIS. OK. so. The feature style, we want it to draw the way it's rendering right now. So we just want to keep using that geology dip bedding and allow it to continue drawing this way. So that's fine. 
So if we leave these attributes in, that's where it's getting that rotation and dip value from. So it will continue to display correctly, but when we export it, we're lacking the fields that we need. We're lacking the attributes. So we can add in an attribute. And because we've added in a whole bunch of attributes from previous templates from different feature types, we can go ahead and just start adding these in from the drop-down menu. Let's go ahead and add in azimuth. And the attribute value for that, we can then specify later on. We can set a default value with this. And what that means is the next time we create a, let me rephrase that. In a template, when we create a template uh, that is one of these, the feature type, we can specify when we're creating that feature type from the beginning to have a set value. For this case, we're just going to add in the value afterwards of the attribute of this. So in this case, it looks something like 190, 200, uh, looks like the strike is, not, yeah, 185. So the dip direction is 185. Um, so let's go ahead then and just say, okay, we're going to add in that field empty. Now, since we have the azimuth field in here, which is required in NCGMP09, we can just double click on it and go ahead and type in the dip direction, dip azimuth 185 and say, okay. And now we see we've retained that value in here and NCGMP09 also requires a data source ID, and let's set a default for that to be DS01, which would be Scott AB. Then we want to go ahead and add in the existence confidence. How certain are we that this is a strike dip? How certain are we that, or yeah, how certain are we that we are measuring a strike and dip value, a betting plane? Uh, is it probable? Uh, that it's a betting plane, or is it questionable that it's a betting plane? For this case, let's set it as certain. We're fairly certain that this is in fact a strike dip of a betting plane. So we can go ahead and say that that existence confidence that we are measuring a betting plane is certain. Then we can also add in our identity confidence. Did we identify this as a bed correctly? Is it, are we certain? How certain are we that it is in fact a bed? We certainly saw that we could measure something, so something exists. Now we're adjusting the identity of it. How certain are we that it's a betting plane? We are certain. Then we can go ahead and add in the attribute of inclination. This is our dip value. So here we can just go ahead and say 5, and we'll see that when we created that and typed in 5, it added it in. We can also do this after the fact. So. Let's go ahead and add in another one like we did azimuth and say, is this, <clears throat> excuse me, is this concealed? We can say okay with no attribute value associated with it, double click on it, and we can go ahead and type in no, or look at the drop down menu to see if there's some value that already exists that we want to use for this. In this case, we want to say no, this is not concealed. Label. Label is a feature that we can leave empty because we're going to label off of our inclination so that we see that five next to the strike dip symbol. But label could be used to label it some other way. Uh, and for strike and dips, I'm coming, I'm not able to come up with a label that would be appropriate for that. Some, um, information that would provide more information to this. So I'm drawing a blank on what that could be. But let's say we had a line and it was a fault. We could go ahead and label that fault Montoso fault or something like that. And then when we're displaying this in ArcGIS, we can label off of the label field and those features that have a label will then display that label. And in this case, like I suggested, Montoso fault. Location confidence. This is how certain we are that our point on the map is in the correct location. If this is added in from a GPS, you can absolutely use the GPS uh, accuracy value, 
Most of them record that when you collect a waypoint so that you know whether or not your point is within plus or minus, you know, 5 feet, 10 feet, 15 feet. Most of the time I see about 10 feet of accuracy, um, you know, 3 meters plus or minus. Um, I have seen GPSs be a little more precise than that, but that is the value that tells you how close it is to having you located accurately on the globe. Um, one of the things, if we're doing this kind of manually from like a map sheet or something like that, how confident are you that you are standing and your topo base is accurate and is locating you in the right location while you're staring at it while you're putting your point? Um, by default, I usually have the template be negative 999. And that means that's standard terminology commonly for no value recorded. And what that states is there was no value recorded up for location accuracy. This then says that there is no certainty as to its location confidence. Um, but if you're fairly certain, you can go ahead and set an attribute for this that states what you think the confidence is, such as going ahead and saying, yeah, I'm pretty sure I was within three meters. So we see that this is lo con location confidence in meters. So, you know, plus or minus 10 feet. I am going to leave this blank because I did not create this point, so I don't know what the location confidence is. I'm going to go ahead and say no value entered. These should be edited when you're adding in your points so that you can say with a certain level of certainty of how close you were to being located on it. And that's relative to your GPS or relative to the topo base. All topo bases have a plus or minus 1.5 meters or excuse me, millimeters on the map to five millimeters. That is the accepted tolerance for all USGS topo maps. Any 1 to 24K map has a plus or minus on the low end. It's a going to be within 1.5 or 5 millimeters. 5 millimeters on a 1 to 24K map is pretty big, but that's what they accept as their acceptable tolerance. That doesn't mean that everything is going to be off by five millimeters on a uh, topo base, but it could mean that the area of interest could be plus or minus five millimeters. And I don't remember what the calculation at one to 24 K works out to be for five millimeters. Um, I can figure that out really quick though. So let's do a little math. So that looks like the plus or minus value could only be as good as 120 meters um, in on the ground. That's a little scary. And then if we put in 1.5, and this is one of the things that I think a lot of people um, take for granted and think that the USGS topos are perfect. They're not. Um, so at 1.5 meters, no matter what, Based on the topo base, the only value you could put in here is 36 meters because that is the accuracy to which the USGS claims. So the lowest value you can do while mapping on a topo base without a GPS is technically 36 meters. That's actually a pretty large error bar if you think about it. So it's always better to use a GPS and get the location confidence from the GPS instead of using the USGS topo base because their error is 1.5 millimeters to 5 millimeters. And that's a pretty big error bar, you know, 36 meters to 120, uh, 120 meters. That's pretty significant on the ground.
So that's something to keep in mind when recording your location confidence. So I put it in as 999. I didn't add this point. I don't know the location confidence. I could say with certain certainty, since we're mapping on a USGS topo base, that it is absolutely no better than, or it could be no better than 36. It could be worse than that. It technically could be better than that if we use the GPS to locate that point. Okay, so let's keep adding attributes. We could go ahead and add the map unit attribute and go ahead and say, oh, this unit is, uh, this uh, strike dip is in fact in this KCD unit. So if we wanted, we could add that in. Uh, that is technically not a feature that is preserved in orientation point, in this case, strike and dip in NCGMP09 gems. Uh, it is a attribute that is from a different feature class, different shape file. So one of the things that we need to keep in mind with this added attribute value is that all of the manual entered attributes will show up here. This is why there is concealed with a space and is concealed without a space. I messed up on one of them and typed a space in one where there shouldn't be a space. So we permanently have this in here for all of the ad, uh, feature layers that we could possibly want. This is technically from our map unit point feature class. You can add it in, just note that it won't be preserved in every single uh, feature. Um, the ones that are common for orientation point are all of these up to map unit point. We should go ahead and add in notes because if you have some note about that point, like check GPS for location confidence, that then goes in there and that tells me, hey, I need to go look at that for GPS location confidence. <clears throat> notes could also be, you know, remove um, at scales greater than. 1 to 24k. So if this map was being displayed at 1 to 12k, it would remove that one or remove at scales less than 1 to 24,000. So if this was a 1 to 125, this would tell me that I should not display that on that 1 to 125 map. Symbol. This is an important one. Every single feature has this one. And in this case, since this is a strike dip of a bedding plane, it's 06. Dot zero, uh, excuse me, 0 06.02. That says that it is an inclined bedding plane. And the last one, yeah, is for uh, type, which is a line type. So we don't need that one. So we can close this and cancel. Now we have all of our attributes, including the three that are allowing this symbol to draw like it claims, all right here. And when we export this, the ones we need for our data model, azimuth to symbol, will now show up. So once I click OK, that bit of information is now preserved in it, and we can still edit the strike dip point the same way by rotating this. And this should not be top of map screen. This should be going off of true north. And that allows us to uh, accurately rotate this off of your true north measurement that your declination of the compass should be set to account for. Or we can edit the point feature here again because, oh shoot, right, I actually need the azimuth to be 190. I was off. Okay, we can go ahead and fix that. So that is the process for editing existing points and adding the attributes that are required for NCGMP09 data model, soon to be the GEMS data model. Okay, now let's go through that again without all of the explanation so that we can see the step-by-step -step process fairly fast, fairly rapid, and go through it again so that we understand what we're doing. So we want to select our edit tool, select the feature in question, and edit the point feature. Edit, edit, point feature. And this is fine. We're going to leave it as a strike dip type. 
this is actually saving in the correct orientation point feature class. We don't need a custom description. We're going to leave the rendering exactly the way it is here using that uh, dip of bedding, inclined bedding. And we're going to go ahead and now add in the fields that we want. So let's start at the top. Azimuth. The azimuth of this one is 225. The dip direction is 225. Data source ID is Scott AB. The existence confidence, I'm guessing, is certain. The identity confidence is probably certain as well. The inclination, we need to set to our uh, dip value, the 3. Is it concealed? I surely hope not, otherwise that's a hard uh, bedding plane to take a measurement off of. Label, label is blank. Location and confidence is negative 999 because we are uncertain as to what it was recorded at. Map unit we don't need because that's for map unit point. Notes for any notes that we need. Symbol, this is 06.02. .02. And this is why the template is handy because we may not memorize this. And that takes care of it. Okay, so that's the process for adding in the attributes that we need to be NCGMP09 compliant for a feature that was digitized using the strike dip tool. Okay, now one other comment that I'm going to make. I said in my notes to make this one, uh, check the location confidence of this. Let's say we have done that. We can come in, right click, edit, edit point feature come to our note and delete that note saying we have done that step. Voila. Now we have checked the location confidence of that point. So that's basic point editing. We can do this for any point type that we want. We can alter it in any way we need to based off of what it is. So the same applies for this KCD point right here. If we select it and right click and edit point feature, we can see that we can edit that attribute table just the same. Now, the reason why we created our feature types to begin with is so that we don't have to go in and edit these one by one. It makes it much faster to go ahead and edit these features very quickly because of our defaults that we have set in that type. So, let's say we wanted to create a strike dip I would not use the strike dip tool that is me personally because I have a template that is set up ready to create that for me. Now it doesn't display very nicely, but it will display correctly in ArcGIS. And the way I have these displaying for the ones that I created are like this. This tells me that the dip direction is this way at six degrees. So you may not be able to identify this as a strike dip per se, but it's telling you that this is dipping this way and has a uh, dip of about six degrees. So let's say we wanted to add another one in here. It's quite simple. We come to our create point tool, click the point where we want it, and it says, okay, now I'm going to pull up the modify features information. And if we say that we want to use one of the default templates for this, like 0602, an inclined bedding showing strike and dip, let's do something different than 0602. We've seen those. So let's do a vertical bedding showing strike. So this is a vertical bed showing the strike direction only. I click that and look. All of my attributes immediately showed up for me with default values preset per this feature type. So we should see that if it's vertical bedding, the inclination should be zero. And sure enough, by de or 90, sorry. And by default, 
that 90 value was put in. That's kind of nice because then automatically it just comes in with that correct symbology. And because we did some work up at the front end, we said the default style for this will be vertical bedding. So we can see that it's drawing vertical. And we can also set the azimuth of it. Let's set it at, so currently it's zero. Let's set it to, um, that's the dip direction of it is set to zero degrees. So that's something to pay attention to. We aren't setting the strike value with these. We're always setting the dip direction value. So let's set it to 30. We say OK. We see that it didn't rotate. And that's because azimuth is not the feature, the, excuse me, the field that Global Mapper uses to rotate this feature. So we'd have to come in and specify the style and set the rotation to be that 30 degrees. Now it'll rotate to that 30 degrees. So, and then there's basically nothing else I need to do unless I know that my existence confidence is different than certain, my identity confidence is different than certain, my data source is someone else, or I want to add in my location confidence of this point. Or we wanted to add a note. Okay, so we've seen how to add that point in. And let's say okay. And there is my point with a strike of 30 and a dip of 90 degrees. It's a vertical bedding point. Now, the ones that were added in previously, we can go in and change all of those. But because they were exported from ArcGIS, the quickest way to get those to symbolize was to use the vector function of them. We can go ahead and change that if we really want to. We can come to this point, select it, edit point feature, and we could go ahead and say, instead of making this the geology arrow, let's go ahead and make this dip bedding medium black or small black. that will then match what is on the map already. We have to set our rotation value. So that would be the point that we would need to There it is. So the azimuth for this is 220. So we'll set the rotation to be 220. We say okay. And now we've changed the symbol of that for some reason it didn't draw the right symbol. Maybe I selected the wrong one. Let's look at that again. Edit point. Ah, yeah, I chose cleavage. Sorry. Uh, bedding, small, black. Okay. Now we see that we have changed that. The reason why I didn't do that is because it's kind of time consuming to go in and change all of those one by one. There's no easy way to go in and change all of them to have that specific symbol. But I could go in and say, hey, draw all of these things some specific way. And in order to do that, I had to use the vector functionality. It's just easier to do very quickly for a large set of data. Otherwise, what I'd have to do is I'd have to add in a feature that is the strike and dip azimuth that Global Mapper uses, and then make that value populate and Global Mapper doesn't have that functionality, unfortunately. Um, there is no way to edit the attribute table as the attribute table. There's no way to view the attribute table as an attribute table. We can only see the attribute table for selected features. It's a little annoying. I can't come in and just edit a table of data like you can in ArcGIS. There is also no way to view that table in Global Mapper. Um, I forget which um, version it was initially requested in, but Global Mapper has a forum where you can go and make comments and suggestions. 
and early on um, I was reading through some of those and I would think it was version 13 or something like that where that request was made it was absolutely added to global mappers list of items that they wanted to add as an option to view the attribute table but they haven't done it yet so we're now on version 18 uh, 18 one came out a couple weeks ago maybe a month ago so we know it's on their radar we know that they have been um, suggested numerous times that they should do it on the forums and they have actually added it to their um, requested list of uh, information that users have wanted so we know it's on the radar it's probably just a matter of time before it becomes a reality and then we can probably go in and change bulk values like this so again if we wanted to change the symbols we would right click edit point feature and change the symbol to dip bedding small black okay and now it's picking up that rotation information based on the fact that we said that when, when I imported these and said symbolize off of asthma it then knows that that that's that that is the rotation value here now this rotation angle azimuth is different global mapper made that for this one made that feature uh, excuse me field for this point data when I imported it in that allows me to then rotate off of some azimuth it is not the same as this azimuth So we want to make sure that those match is uh, what I'm ultimately getting at. So that was the reason why I left these displaying the way they are because it was easy to add them in and very quick to get all of them symbolized showing a vector, which technically it's not a vector, it's two vectors because two vectors make a plane. But this is the easy way to show the direction of dip and show the dip value. So let's go ahead and add in another dip point just for good measure. If we want to add another dip value, we go ahead and say create point feature. Add our point. We want to specify it to be some specific feature type and it's going to pull up the last one we used. Let's say we want this one to be horizontal bedding. So the dip should be zero click that we want this to be preserved in our strike dip values and by default all of these things came in with those different symbols so we can see that the azimuth is zero pointing up until we change that and the inclination is set to zero but that's good because inclination should be zero for a horizontal bed and technically the azimuth should also be zero so we don't need to worry about anything else other than making sure our existence confidence is good, our identity confidence is good, our location confidence, we can set that, and any notes that we have. So being that I have not um, digitized these points on here, I couldn't say what my location confidence is. But because I did digitize this one, let's say I'm just digitizing this horizontal bed, on this topo base and I've been out in the field and I've seen it I didn't have a GPS I can only put my lo conf location confidence to be 36 meters so we say okay there we go that's what it is okay so that is the preferred method for adding points in but remember we can go in and edit the attributes of points that were imported in the shape file to begin with or points that were added using the create strike dip tool now the create strike dip tool is very convenient and very nice the caveat is it doesn't store the information that we need when we pull this map out of global mapper so that's the reason why it's good to know how to come in and edit the points of existing features be it added by strike dip or added by uh, previous existing features from ArcGIS or in some cases points added by GPS we could easily go in and add those points so let's go ahead and turn everything off and look at the GPS points that were added so there we have some GPS points if we zoom in 
to one. Let's go ahead and switch to the edit tool, select it, right click and edit point. We can see that I don't know what this feature is, but if we have uh, a notebook and our field map associated with it, we can find out what this point specifically is and apply our values to it. So let's say this is an inclined bed showing strike and dip. Voila, there we go. Now we have specified that that is what that is. And we should also then move it from GPS points to strike dip points. That then moves this feature from our GPS point feature class to our strike and dip point feature class. And then we can go ahead and edit the attributes just the same. So I don't know what the azimuth is. I don't know what the inclination for this is. I don't even know that this is a strike or uh, incline bedding uh, feature. But we can go ahead and edit those attributes. But because I specified my feature type, the feature type default attributes come in for that feature, for that specific point. Let's put it that way. Now I'm doing very bad things. This is, I moved this to strike and dip. When I click OK, then this feature shows up in strike and dip. I'm going to say cancel because I'm not sure where that's actually supposed to go. And one other comment that I will make is when we create something. So let's say we create a point and we don't specify where we want this to be. We use user created features or create new layer from feature that doesn't go anywhere. It goes into this user created feature or create new layer feature. This exists effectively nowhere <clears throat> when we export it. Uh, that's bad. That means we could miss points. So if you ever see user created features, make sure that you find that specific feature and come in here, edit that feature, and move it to the correct location. That then makes sure that when we're done, we don't have any of these user-created features that aren't stored somewhere. So we can now see that that user-created feature, there are zero of them. One was deleted, but another one was added to here. So that's one great way that we can see how to add points in and how to manipulate existing points to show the information that we really want and need them to show. And we can also trust that when we're done with the working in Global Mapper and we ship this off to a cartographer, they can go ahead and load it into ArcGIS and do what they need to do with it. Global Mapper is a great program. There are lots of things about it that I absolutely just adore. One of the things that I don't like about it is the symbology. This is definitely not a cartographic tool, whereas ArcGIS has come leaps and bounds to become a cartographic tool. They listened to a lot of the comments and um, suggestions from users and made it to where you can really make beautiful maps in ArcGIS. Global Mapper is great. It lacks the capability of making complex maps very quickly and very simply. As you can see, I mean, if we wanted to go in and change individual points, we could go in and change it, but we have to do it one by one. It's easier to do it while you're creating them. ArcGIS, I can go and change symbology or labels pretty much instantaneously if I have the correct features. That's why we use the symbol field because it allows us to, with a number, code the symbol that we want. And then we just tell ArcGIS, hey, based on this code, draw it this way. It happens very quickly, and it's, uh, it changes all of the features that are coded that way with a few clicks of the mouse. So it's one of my gripes about Global Mapper. It lacks some of the cartography beauty. It's all capable, but it just lacks the finesse to get it done quickly. And when you're creating a map, you don't want to fuss around and mess around with all of those things. So that's why we create our template, because it allows us to specify what we want things to look like early on. And we only have to do this once 
to get all of those default values that are absolutely required. And then we just have to edit them based off of that default value if it varies from that default value. So that is the process of how templates actually work and how to add points um, to the map and also how to edit existing points.